subpoena to President Trump. President Trump, this is in connection with the records case, President Trump didn't contest the subpoena. He voluntarily cooperated with it, allowed three agents and a senior DOJ official to come to his property on June 3rd and to up, uh, pick up a set of documents that they thought were uh, what the government was looking for, the last remaining documents that were left there. The president actually came down and surprised everybody, dressed up in a suit, came down, greeted the FBI agents, said, I appreciate what you're doing. And he told them, if there's anything you need, let us know. We will cooperate fully. When the president left, the FBI agents, according to government officials and private sources I've talked to, asked for permission to go see the storage locker, the one they just broke into a week ago. They were voluntarily allowed to go in and take a look at the locker, see what things were done, uh, ask questions. They left in a very cordial manner because the president was cooperating without any resistance, and he had made a promise, you need something, come back, I'm going to deliver it. Five days later, the government asked that a good padlock be put on that room, secure that room, which the Secret Service did, and nothing occurred for two months until they showed up and raided. The president was voluntarily complying with a grand jury subpoena, and then he gets raided anyways. These are going to raise some very serious questions about the timeline of what has now happened. Well, that's the question. The more we learn, the more confusing this gets. What, what did they possibly tell Reinhardt? Uh, did they relay the, this history to the magistrate that, according to these sources, that the president had cooperated? I mean, the idea that he was subject to a subpoena, complied with the subpoena, didn't challenge it, uh, voluntarily showed the storage room to the agents, uh, followed their advice, secured it at, to, to meet their demands, um, all of that is hardly a basis for saying now we need to send in 40 uh, FBI agents on a, on a nighttime raid. I mean, if the subpoena worked the first time, then presumably a second subpoena would work the second time if there were remaining documents that were not gathered up in the first collection. What we have to find out is the details. You know, there's a suggestion of this confidential source. What was alleged in these papers? Uh, do they really suggest there was a risk of destruction or active concealment? Those are the things we're going to have to be looking at. And as for the recusal report that you just heard, obviously that's really quite odd. I mean, if he recused himself the first time, it's, it's, it's rather odd to see himself executing such an important uh, search warrant uh, just a little while later, unless there was something about the first case or circumstance that had an added conflict of interest. Uh, we'll have to find that out as well. So what well, is the 